Tallulah Bankhead was born into wealth and privilege, and though she was mainly known as a stage actor, she became a symbol of Hollywood extravagance in her lifetime. She was a big hit at social affairs, where she often shocked the staid members of that society with her untraditional behaviour. She chain-smoked and enjoyed more than her share of Kentucky bourbon, and made it a habit to take her clothes off and chat. Why Tallulah Bankhead was one of Hollywood's most unconventional movie stars. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you're new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Tallulah Bankhead, Hollywood's most scandalous actress. Tallulah Bankhead was too scandalous to be linked to scandals. Tallulah Bankhead was an American stage and film actress who was best known for her wit, her outrageous personality and her husky voice. She gained critical acclaim in the US and the UK for her roles as an actress and gained notoriety in her personal life for her drinking, drug use and sexual exploits. Marlena Dietrich called her the most immoral woman who ever lived. Cecil Beaton described her as a wicked archangel. But no one better summed up this fascinating woman than Tallulah herself in an unending succession of anecdotes and one-liners, peppered with expletives that became her trademark. Branded an unsafe and unsavoury person by the Hayes Commission in the 1930s, her career went from tremendous stage success in such hits as The Little Foxes and Fallen Angels to appearances in some of the worst plays ever written, which she turned into triumphs by improvising lewd and outrageous asides to satisfy the cravings. Tallulah Brockman Bankhead was born 31st January 1902 to William and Adelaide Bankhead. She was born into a family of Alabama royalty. She was named after her paternal grandmother. Bankhead had an older sister who had been born prematurely and was vision impaired. Bankhead's mother died three weeks after Bankhead's birth. Her father's side of the family were mostly politicians, and her father was the Speaker of the US House of Representatives between 1936 and 1940. Bankhead's father took the death of his wife badly and went through depression and alcoholism, leaving Bankhead and her sister to be looked after by their grandmother. As the girls grew, their grandmother had trouble looking after the girls, and it was suggested they be sent to a convent school by their father. Tallulah has been described as an extremely homely child, overweight and with a deep husky voice resulting from chronic bronchitis. However, others described her as an exhibitionist, performer, personality and star from the very beginning. At age 10, along with her sister, Tallulah entered boarding school. Enrolling in the same grade throughout their lives due to Eugenia's frailty, they originally attended the Catholic Convent of the Sacred Heart in Manhattanville, New York, where Tallulah's temper soon had them in trouble. Bankhead also learned that performing gave her the attention she wanted, and she soon found she was talented as well. While her sister got married at 16, Tallulah Bankhead decided she was going to pursue a career in acting. Bankhead was 15 when she was one of several winners in a contest. She sent her photo into the magazine Picture Play, and the winners were going to win a trip to New York and have a role in a movie. To Bankhead's disappointment, the role was a minor one, and she was only paid $75 for three weeks' work. She did, however, make the most of her time and found her place in New York City. She moved into the Algonquin Hotel, which was known for the artistic and literary community that frequented there. Bankhead was soon friends with Estelle Winwood, Eva La Gallienne, and Blythe Daly. They were all either lesbians or bisexual. While Bankhead never openly admitted to her bisexuality, she was linked with many major female actresses over the years, including Greta Garbo and Marlena Dietrich, and singer Billie Holiday. Bankhead's career began with roles in three silent movies during 1918. She then debuted in a stage production called The Squab Farm at the Bijou Theatre in New York. Bankhead felt much more comfortable on stage and felt that was where she belonged. Though she lacked training and discipline, she possessed a dazzling stage presence, 
her husky voice providing fascinating contrast with her good looks. Quickly ascending to stardom, she just as easily gained renown for her quick-witted outspokenness and indefatigable party-going. Outspoken and often vulgar, but undeniably talented, Bankhead was known for being a true rebel in a time when many actresses were expected to be demure ingenues. In 1923 she journeyed to England to appear opposite Gérald de Maurier in The Rope Dancers and thereby launched what was perhaps the most spectacular London stage career of the 1920s. Her calculatedly outrageous public behaviour, her multiple romances, and the habit of wearing flimsy lingerie on stage, whether the script called for it or not, endeared her to fans. Notably her own clique, the Gallery Girls, who showed up at every performance to express their noisy idolatry while annoying her detractors. After a succession of mediocre sex dramas that made few demands on her talent, Bankhead confounded her critics with her brilliant performance as a troubled young waitress in the London production of Sidney Howard's they knew what they wanted. In 1931 she returned to the United States to star in films for both Paramount and MGM. Inexplicably the studio executives tried to transform her into a second Marlena Dietrich, which resulted in such overwrought melodramas as My Sin and Devil and the Deep. Giving up on Hollywood, Bankhead returned to Broadway, where she chalked up one stage triumph after another. Her theatrical career reached its zenith with her performances in The Little Foxes and The Skin of Our Teeth, both of which earned her the New York Drama Critics Circle Award. In 1933, Tallulah Bankhead became gravely ill from venereal disease. She had to undergo an emergency hysterectomy which took several hours. She recuperated in Alabama and then in 1934 went back to England. A short time later she was asked to return to New York to perform in the stage production of The Little Foxes. It was also during this period that she was briefly married to actor John Emery. In 1943 she decided to give Hollywood a second try. Again the results were disappointing, with the notable exception of her superb multifaceted performance in Alfred Hitchcock's Lifeboat. Bankhead then starred in Private Lives and toured with the production before taking it to Broadway. The play ran for almost two years over 1948 and 1949 and made her a very rich woman. In all her future work, Bankhead was able to take 10% of the gross and had lead billing over the other cast members. Bankhead famously did not like wearing underwear, a fact which she enjoyed flaunting on the set of the film Lifeboat. Every morning she would have to climb a ladder to get to the set and she delighted in climbing ahead of her crew members revealing her lack of underwear. When a female reporter visiting the set complained, the studio head went to talk to Hitchcock, who was pretty entertained by the whole thing and wouldn't interfere. By the late 1940s and early 1950s, Bankhead's hedonistic lifestyle and excessive drinking had taken its toll. She is quoted as having said, My father warned me about men and booze, but he never mentioned a word about women and cocaine. Most of her Broadway endeavours during this decade were flops and critics complained that she had become a self-caricature. She kept her career afloat by publishing a best-selling autobiography, touring in such plays as Private Lives and Dear Charles and headlining her own nightclub act. In 1965 she made her last film appearance playing a homicidal religious fanatic in the British thriller Die, Die, My Darling. Tallulah Bankhead's final acting assignments included a special guest villain stint on the TV series Batman. When advised that the series was considered high camp, her response was vintage Tallulah. Don't tell me about camp, darling. I invented it. Making movies wasn't really something that Bankhead aspired to or enjoyed, much preferring the stage to film. Of course, a girl's got to eat, and when Paramount Studios came knocking with a chance to make $50,000 per film, she couldn't pass it up. Always the comedian, she later quipped, The only reason I went to Hollywood was to hook up with that divine Gary Cooper. Trouble seemed to go hand in hand with Bankhead, and she almost got thrown out of England when MI5 called her immoral for becoming involved with a group of Eton schoolboys. 
The only thing that saved her was the fact that the school refused to cooperate with a special branch inquiry in order to keep the scandal from getting out. The boys ended up having to leave school as a result of the scandal, but they probably thought it was worth it. A confidential MI5 report to the Home Secretary in August 1928 states, The charge against Miss Tallulah Bankhead is quite simply a. that she is an extremely immoral woman and b. that in consequence of her association with some Eton boys last term, the latter have had to leave Eton. The MI5 officer, identified only as FHM, said it was common knowledge at Eton that five or six boys had been convicted of breaking bounds for associating with Miss Bankhead. He said they included Lord Roslyn's grandson, the third son of Sir Matthew Scatters Wilson, whose two older boys had already been sent down, and a boy named Parsons. No information could be obtained at Eton and no inquiry or action that the Home Office could make or take regarding TB could embarrass Eton. TB was seen at Eton frequently last term. I hear from another master that one or both of Sir M. Wilson's older sons used to motor down with her to see the third son who was then smuggled away for the afternoon under a rug in the car. It was said this was the start of a TB Eton boys clique. MI5 secured a private letter to Eton parents in which the head denied anybody was expelled but admitted two boys had been dismissed and three disciplined. FHM, lacking the evidence to throw Miss Bankhead out of Britain, noted the headmaster is obviously not prepared to assist the Home Office. He wants to do everything possible to keep Eton out of the scandal. Confessing to over 500 love affairs with both men and women, Tallulah married just once to a fellow actor, John Emery. They divorced in 1941. Emery divorced her, citing mental cruelty. A headline writer's dream throughout her life, at the height of her fame, she was said to drink two bottles of bourbon a day, smoke 100 cigarettes and take pills to help her sleep, pills to keep her awake, and pills to help her cope with the pills. But while there always seemed to be someone on hand to record Tallulah's indiscretions, the other side of her personality went largely unrecorded. She raised vast amounts of money for children's charities, delivered stringent speeches against communism and racial and sexual prejudice, and actively supported the presidential campaigns of two friends, Truman and Kennedy. As the 1950s moved on, Bankhead's career began to slow. She remained in the public eye, unfortunately for mostly the wrong reasons, as her personal behaviour was not considered acceptable much of the time. Tallulah Bankhead continued to perform across various mediums, including television, radio, Broadway and the movies. She also performed in Las Vegas in 1953 and was paid $30,000 per week, which was considered a fortune at the time. During this period, Bankhead had become dependent on drugs and succumbed to depression. Her career moved into decline over the next few years. In the late 1950s, Tallulah Bankhead moved to East 62nd Street. On 12th of December 1968, she died at the age of 66. She was at St. Luke's Hospital in Manhattan at the time, and cause of death was given as pleural double pneumonia, with complications from emphysema. Tallulah Bankhead has a reputation of being one of the best stage performers of the last century, she was a versatile actress and was able to perform across both dramatic and comedy roles. She was one of the first actresses to be known by first name only in both the US and England. Tallulah Bankhead did things her own way and lived her life how she wanted, giving no regard to what other people thought. While this quality was endearing during her career, towards the end of her life, sadly, it kept her in the media for the wrong reasons. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Tallulah Bankhead? She was a real rebel, but we barely know anything about the other side of her personality.